might be sad i pray and i believe that i don't go emotional lose don't cry mm. <laughs> what do they do uh, they, they take a, a sensational emotional moment <laughs> <laughs> Did you listen to the hot breakfast this morning? Here's what you missed. A story a day. You're going to love this story, folks. I'm telling you, from zero to hero. A uh, man who started off not knowing what the way forward is going to be, but he kept his dream alive and kept trying this and that, losing a job here and there. Things that would throw you off psychologically as a human being. Absolutely, folks. And, you know, when you think that the world is against you, when you think you cannot go on, listen to the story of Walter Nyambaga. I'm telling you, it is unbelievable. Listen up. Listen carefully. You can do it and never give up that's the moral of the story mm-hmm. he's never. here seated looking dapper in his <laughs> navy blue suit <laughs> matching with the light blue uh uh side yeah. and a checkered uh, uh, tie with a, what do you call it a pocket square <laughs> in mouth which is pink in some circles <laughs> depending on your crayon box it will be welcome. pink or mouth yes welcome <laughs> to hot <Earth> 96 <laughs> Thank you, Jeff. Thank you, thank you, Jeff. Thank you, Nick. Yes. Yeah, that description, I'm, I'm sure I'm, I must, I must appreciate. It. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, Walter, yep. we bumped into you and yesterday you were saying, hey, I really want to talk to Jeff. And he came and just gave us a bit of his story. And, and we yeah. said, wow, what a story. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my. Oh, my. <laughs> and here you are. It might be sad. I pray and I believe that I don't go emotional. Lose, don't cry. Mm. <laughs> What do they do? Uh, they, they take a, a sensational emotional moment. <laughs> <laughs> sensational emotional moment. Yeah. <laughs> well, um, grown, uh, I mean, uh, I grew back in Koweru village. That's Migori County. Okay. sub county. Um, a very humble ground, the son of a known Thatcher. Oh, it used to be a roof thatcher. Yeah, great. You have to uh, me begin with the, <laughs> with the adjective. <laughs> <laughs> he was a great roof thatcher. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Joseph Nyambagalela, uh-huh. a very great man. Yes. I, owe, I owe him a lot. Yes. So uh, we were not lucky to be brought up in a very fancy kind of life. Mm-hmm. It was very humble. Mm-hmm. We thank God. We managed to <laughs> go to secondary school. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So out of making breaks you see uh farming tobacco and all that so my dad managed a school fee of uh up to form four and he told me me and you <laughs> mm-hmm. we are done <laughs> 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 because remember you still have some siblings coming yes uh, so you better craft your way out yeah so there uh it did not okay by the way having said that he told me uh, you can also venture into this farming thing you see it has raised money until you are done with your form four i looked at the life around there and i had created some good friendship with people out of church you know and then a lady came in one of the camp meeting and saw me singing and said oh young man you really sing very nice and i took the contact and after one two weeks told me um can you work as a shop attendant uh, i have an aunt in nairobi who can you see he's seeking for somebody who can be an attendant in nairobi boom i went and told my dad he told me nairobi <laughs> never nairobi <laughs> never why said, it's okay no there were some kind of uh, stories that you know when guys goes to nairobi sometimes they hustle you know they don't get money and then they turn into robbers great thuggies around mm-hmm. so that uh demystification uh wasn't uh clear in his uh, mind he had conceived it and he had consumed it yes. clearly so when i told him that he didn't allow it i went and told my grandma <laughs> who is the late sorry so uh grandma gave me 400 shillings and he told me young man you cannot sit in the village and grow tobacco you cannot sit in the gra- in the village and sell the land do you know selling the land i mean <laughs> selling the breaks so go craft your way out so late in the evening uh, i had uh, sneaked out my bag and and managed out of me out of out of town out of the village and i was in migori town so at uh, around uh, 
eight, my dad was calling me. Uh, Walter, where are you? We want to have our dinner. And I was like, hey, dad, uh, sorry, I had left. I'm going to Nairobi. I paid about 500 shillings for Nairobi. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> he told me, <laughs> young man, do you know I can come to Nairobi with my <laughs> with my bakora and can you back? <laughs> <laughs> so I came to Nairobi straight and then uh, the person who I was coming to uh, work for, uh, I'd send a young man to come and pick me from Machakos. But that night I couldn't sleep, man. Mm. Me imagining being in Nairobi, mm. that's 2013. Okay, the guy picked me, then dropped me to that time mama's place. I uh, have a lot of respect for her. Then uh, I was working as a shop attendant for those electronic staffs. But one funny thing used to happen. So despite my services at the shop, every evening now, uh, going back, you'll find uh, some hipped uh, towels from the saloons. He had several saloons, some in Yaya or Rev Bar I mean, Karyubangi, uh, Tasha, so many places. So in the evening, you will find uh, all those towels, they are brought back. There are, uh, let me say, like three basin, and you will go through them. You wash them? You wash them. Mm. You stay there, what do you offer? So you do the washing and you saw those uh, wig sometimes you find them wrapped with those towels So when you clean they cut you but you you have no option. You love to clean them. So after you're done You get some food to keep you going and then uh, The day goes So uh, in the morning you you're the first to wake up and clean the compound, you know take care of the the dogs there are some dogs you call them puppy dogs or whatever mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> so you take care of those dogs so after one month i received my first salary i think it was about six thousand shillings because i was being paid 200 shillings per day and i sent that money to one of my uh, let me call it aid this this this, this money i sent about uh 5500 to this lady this lady was to take this money to my girlfriend then Hmm. Boom, she got a uh, transport to Tanzania. And disappeared. Disappeared. Without never being <laughs> first out of my family. <laughs> she has never come back again uh -huh. till today. But anyway, that's aside. Now you didn't want to use a pesa. No, 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 no. Okay, the girlfriend didn't have a phone to send. I mean oh, to receive the money. So okay. that was a way of Nisi making cash available for her at a the nice time. surprise. Something happened with my employer. She was married to a um, uh, Congoli. Mm -hmm. uh, let me say Congoli yeah. because uh, the, 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 the accent, that's what led me off because she said something and I did grasp it as quick as possible. And it was something to do with those electronic uh, uh, machines, how to operate them because we used to sell gyms, those microwave. And I'm hearing microwave for the first time in my life. Mm -hmm. I don't even know how to operate it. And he said something about the microwave. So I went and did my own things. I remember the guy screamed like he gonna bust that microwave on my head. And he told me, pick your things and leave. Right now. Yes. But before I left, <laughs> the wife pleaded with, with him. He said, uh, oh, this That's your is still adapting, you know. Mm. Okay, so... Something very, also very interesting is that this guy, we used to sometimes come to Yaya, we were staying in Tashia, and then uh, sometimes in uh, Karyobangi and Dono. So he would, he would close the shop alongside himself, I mean together, but you will not board along with him in his car. You will have to run. And if he's the first in the house, remember you will stay outside till tomorrow. So you got to run. Jeff, you got to run. What do you mean? Yes, you got to run. I remember uh, one day I I decided to jump. You know those open matatus that the the the, the, back, the back is not closed. Mm. So uh, around around Donom there was a big jam. It was not already I mean modified into the present state. So we were leaving from Karyobangi, and then I jumped into this open uh, pickup. Uh, Making a calculation by the time he's uh, uh, navigating that jam along uh, Donong, that Jogo Road, I would, I would have jumped out. And luckily, the road was clear. Man, 
the guy was at around 40 50 speed you can't dare jump <laughs> you know he had seen me through the window so he took off until there was jam al around along uh, Jogoro, that is city stadium and then, <laughs> and then he pulled aside he told me don't you ever try, try that nonsense again <laughs> <laughs> so that day, and then I walked again all the way from Donon back to Tasha. And then the guy already in the house, so you'll, you'll ring the bell or whatever. Nobody will listen to you. So adding that mistake to the then uh, statement that I did not consume that fast and quick and I, I, whatever he said, mm -hmm. I was relieved of duty. Yeah. So I took my stars and went i don't know where i was going because one month you haven't known nairobi that much but i remember or oh, i remember at along uchumi uh, <clears throat> i had seen some mama selling vegetables along there and then i also saw some boys uh, that cabridge they were sleeping with some sacks there so i said okay i think i can develop friendship with these people and that's my home now i took my bag and left i went and looked for those polythene paper you know, so I stayed there for almost uh, two weeks. I became friends with them. I don't call them Chokora in my in my in my understanding. They're just people who they have made a choice of life. So we were there. Sometimes uh, I could move to those uh, Vibanda. I go help those mama from carrying uh, boga from uh, Gikomba, and then we move to the the the, the, the uh, selling point. So. The payment back is that I will offer security at night or I will have somewhere to settle over the night. That's the payment. One day, I call a friend of mine who ushered me into his place and he told me, you come, we see what we can do. Then I went in and it happened this was my cousin whom I didn't want to tell that I'm in Nairobi. So he welcomed me. The following day waking up right at the doorstep there was an advert. Vikings Limited companies looking for ambitious <laughs> form four levers. Who <laughs> I know this I said, oh, <laughs> come on now, dear God, you're opening the way. <laughs> I quickly make a phone call and I even I, said, I remember I had three three shillings on my phone and then I introduced myself and said, I am very interested. And then you said, Okay. He asked, who are you? I said, my name is Walter. I'm looking for this job that you've been advertising. I think I'm the right person. Where are you? He said, Jogoro on the phone went, Kling! <laughs> That's okay. Done. So, Jogoro, I went there. I said, Jogoro, yes, I will go there. Then I started tracing, asking from each and every shop if they know those guys. And then I was guided in. Uh, an interview, kind of. So... What we used to do, you are given a kind of merchandise. You are given some plates, table mats. You are given uh, uh, toothpaste, stationeries, uh, those light office equipment. So you drop your national ID. Then you are trained on how to pitch. I mean, pitch marketing. You train how to do the stuff. So you have to dress smart. So we used to put on those ties, white shirt, you know, you have a bag. You, somebody might, fit, may, might think the bag has got some document, but inside <laughs> you have got plates, bro. <laughs> You've got plates, you've got spoon, <laughs> you have everything. <laughs> so uh, we'll, we'll come into your office. We don't need to make an appointment. Come in. Hello, how are you, Jeff? You're doing good? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hi, hi Nick. Mm -hmm. My name is Walter. I uh, come from this big marketing company, and today we're having fun, man. Having great fun. The guy is like, what do you have? Mm -hmm. Right on the hand. Presentation. Pop. Table mat. Spoon. The guy is like, what is this guy doing in my office with spoon? <laughs> is he crazy or what? <laughs> Some will tell me, you know, these things are for our mama. Easy in if it was a end at a foot of mama, bro. Just look how you great. You have a nice necktie, you, you got good English, but easy if it was a yeah, you want me to quarrel with my with my mama? Okay, some will uh, after presentation, you will tell him the price. Use of body language, bro, it works. You've been to a Nam supermarket, yeah, yeah, go there. Money 320 shillings, but guess what? Today, our prices are fantastic 199 shillings. So if you get one. We won't just allow you walk out. There is an additional fee on top. Boom! You've made two sales. That is, 
double sell. Mm-hmm. It's a hundred shillings initially, but you will try to at least, you know, you, you, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so some people will welcome us in, some will not, will not, will not some will say you just uh, stress past. <laughs> but for each and every hundred shillings item you've sold out, you have a commission of 15 shillings. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So uh, the more you sell, the more profit you have the more commission you have. So it was a do or die thing. I said, okay, plates, spoons, I will sell these things. So first day, <clears throat> I was very frustrated, man. I just sold one. I came back with 15 shillings. I said, it's okay, I will go, I will go again. One week, at least, I'm making 45 bob per day. I'm making 30 shillings per day. I said, it's okay, we will go. And I said, maybe. Uh, <laughs> one, John Gitonga, I remember that was the manager then. He walked in and said, oh, who wants to go to Kisumu? And he said, I am right here. I'm going to sell these things in Kisumu in Pimo Mother Tongue. <laughs> I will go. <laughs> <laughs> we were given a, a kind of a, an exchange program. We rushed to Kisumu. I went and met James Kisau and uh, George Maburi. Great guys. Then these guys decided to take me through what it takes to be a merchandiser. He said, you have to be strategized. You have to strategize every sell you uh, every time you're going to the to the field. You have to design your territory. You need to market. You know, the, the, you have to relate with the people. You find the old people. You have to relate with them in this manner. So uh, in Kisumu, I was making 125 shillings, and like in Nairobi, 30 shillings. Mm. <laughs> so we came back to Nairobi after about one month. Something happened one day along Kimathi Street. I had not mastered that 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 treat, uh, I mean territory very well. And then I walked into an office and there was a guy. I remember that guy I think me is an advocate or something. I walked in uh, I was having toothpaste. I was also having spoons. And the guy uh, oh as usual introduction my name is Walter from this big marketing company and today we are having fun blah blah, blah. Uh, so for this spoon it's about it's stainless steel it's it's one of the best in fact you if you're served right there is this stuff flower on top that originally gives you the flavor so uh, normally you've been to those big supermarket naivas yeah yeah of course everyone has gone to naivas some have gone to <laughs> yes 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 a dozen will cost you up to about 250 shillings so today we are giving you a whole dozen at only 199 but because it's already december we'll add you one on top the guy looked at me and said man are you normal <laughs> what are you doing in my office first <laughs> why don't you look for mama along those things? then he picked he picked the bag threw it on floor it was about at first floor he threw it on the stairs and it started rolling going down and people along 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 the street was wondering what or is there is this floor is this floor coming down or what <laughs> they, they were already scared around there so he pulled me by my neck it threw me out I I, I, I I don't know I don't know um, it I started collecting my spoons and my toothpaste one after the another the crowd already formed outside and the guy was watching from the balcony so at that moment I was not even like oh, okay maybe this is the best embarrassment I've got so I collected them all and the guys were asking what is the problem young man and I told them you see the man right up here yeah we were having this big promotion and everyone who buys one at only 199 is getting another one free so the guy wants to pick it all and i have so many people to reach because tomorrow they will need me then he said so i sold the 24 dozen of spoons right there in the streets in the street <laughs> there and i started counting one uh, 2400 shillings as he was watching and i i saw him emotional and i i i, 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 I recollect well he just he just removed his coat and walked inside so myself i i hold my bag and start swinging it on the air like, <laughs> with joy <laughs> with a lot of excitement and i just went so um <clears throat> That, that was the first day I had made uh, uh, some good commission because I sold 24. And when you sell up to 25, it's, 20, it's about 20 shillings commission, not 15 as usual. 
I went and rang the bell in the office. Everyone was happy. Everyone was clapping for me. They don't know the, the, the kind of uh, uh, the trick that I used. We were taken to Mombasa. Again, in Mombasa, it wasn't easy for me because now, yeah, I don't know, those guys are so slow. Mm -hmm. And you know, with this kind of uh, sales, sense of urgency, one, one no, the, the next will be yes. One no, the next will be yes. We quickly came back to uh, Nairobi and it was terrible because there was change of match. We were now uh, doing table match. You know table match? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So table match is, is, is kind of complicated to even to pitch because not everyone will want to have the table match on the table when they are eating. At this time, I had lost all my friends because they... The, the early information they had is Walter got a good job. The guy dressed up so smart and, <laughs> and he got a good job. They know that laptop so one was, day uh, I met one uh, at, a, at a petrol station and the guy saw me with kitchenware and was like, no, no, this is not, this is not the guy we know. There's a problem somewhere. And they went and he spread the news in, in, in like, like, like bushfire mm. and I lost all my friends so I was a lone man and at that time now even making sales was very very uh, difficult because now table mat you'll go the half costas and place mat you will uh, sell one at 200 shillings <sighs> bro I remember I was paying an house at 1,500 shillings and I had a good a, a good landlord then <laughs> uh, Mama Lavo she stays here in Shaurimoyo so one day, I had not paid the rent and he could come in the evening even just advise me on how I can make money because she also had a water point. Sometimes if I've not gone for myself, I would be at that water point collecting the five, five shillings, you know. Jeff, I remember it was Friday. All I had in my pocket was about 15 shillings. And th this one is a little bit personal for me. Mm. Uh, this 15 shillings is what was to cut up for me until Monday. So sometimes you don't get that good food. So you would opt for those cheap ones, you know, the ones just to survive. Mm. So this specific weekend, I had 15 shillings. I decided to buy a juice. You know those juices mm. Of 10 shillings. And bought water. So I diluted it. So that's what I was to take until Monday. So you take like uh, two cups, go down somewhere, sit somewhere. In the evening again, you take that two cups, you know, until Monday. Monday morning, I cannot remember what happened, but I remember I was fed on with some porridge at hand because I had lost energy. I could not even walk out. So this lady, I don't know what she came to do, but she found me flat on the floor. Well, so uh, she gave me a porridge, a cup of porridge, and then I got some energy, and I did not go to work that uh, on that day. So we were to be moved from uh, Nairobi to Eldoret. So in Eldoret, uh, you know those. Uh, le 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 let me let me let me go uh, tribal uh, a little bit. Mm -hmm. Those people harvest uh, maize, and sometimes they use sticks. And these sticks, they sharpen them with knives. So you'll allow me to go brand life. There is this short kiwi knife. It's short, sharp, and strong. It's called kiwi knife. Mm -hmm. The kiwi knife was hot cake. You will sell two at two hundred at one hundred shillings, and the people used to buy it a lot. So we would move as distance from Eldoret, you come to Chemelel, you go to Nandi, you go to Kitale, you go to Bomet, you go to Kakamega. So I had a friend called uh, uh, Daniel Mola, Mola Kaloki. We, would used, we were buddies, we used to work along. So uh, that day, Mola had gone to Kitale and I had come to Chemelel with the Kiwi knives. So we used to sell a lot in the evening. So we didn't know that the distance from uh, Chemelil, Nandi, back to Elorit is a lot, is a, is, a, is a good distance. You have to start early. So there were no matatu going back to Elorit. Then boom, I had, I had made a, about 1,700 shillings. <coughs> I had a commission already. 
So I was figuring out how to get back to Eldoret. Then the cars were passing, passing, passing. Then you would stop any car passing. Then there was a saloon car, I remember. Then I, I, I explained to this guy, you know, we've, we've been doing this around here and now. There's no matter to take us back. <laughs> Jeff, the guy, the guy allows me in. And my match inside, bag. Boom. Nandi Hills. No, before Nandi Hills, he stopped along the road. The guy who was in front came and sat with me behind. Uh, inside, they were not talking at that time. So at this time, the guy, one guy comes back. And then I noticed that uh, in, in his uh, jacket, there were some stains of fresh blood. Like, oh, what's going on here? I had started to panic. At this time, you know I have knives, but they, they are, they are, they are, they are, they, these are commodities to be sold, mm. you remember? Mm. Uh, these guys left the highway. They entered into that thick Nandi forest. It was already approaching eight at this time. They drove inside. There were completely no roads. The guy told me, you make a single noise, you are dead. I was already panicking, Jeff. Nick, all I did is I had to respond to every quest. Then uh, they tied my hands with a small manila. <clears throat> they pulled aside. They opened the, the boot. I think they removed kind of uh, someone. I, I didn't see the person that well because it was already dark and... <clears throat> Only the, 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 the headlights were on. Mm. And they moved that guy into the thicker forest. The two of them. Mm. I mean, uh, uh, the two of them. Alongside myself because they have also hold me. But one, you only face one direction. That was the instruction. So, uh, I don't know where they dropped that guy. But again, we moved up to about 100 meters from the guy. And they tied me seated on those 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 three. So I was squatting like this, holding, and then they tied my eyes. They took everything. I was left with my vest and I think with the, the trousers I had. They went with my commodity. <laughs> my eyes. Yes. So I was there the, the entire night. It was raining. I could uh, feel uh, some movements. Then I started uh, like turning my head like this. At least the, 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 the whatever the cloth that they used, because they used me. I don't know whatever cloth they used. It tied my. So I would move it a little bit to at least see what's happening. At this time, I could not even tell what time it is. I remember something with a cold kind of. Uh, I don't know. It was a nose or what was kind of smelling me and I was freaking at this time and then this animal I th I know it was an animal because in the middle of the forest at that night so uh, I had already moved my my my, my, my moved my uh, my head both sides at least this thing had moved up to, up to my nose I would see so it was chilly morning I can't make noise because I don't know what will appear. I started standing. It, it wasn't possible. I cannot communicate. So it was around Sanne, Sanne Satano. I didn't have time, but I could see the sun. The, the, the sun. So the following day, I stayed here the whole day. The In the whole, forest? Yes. The following day, I would see some deers, antelopes passing. Another night, is approaching here I cannot help myself then I was just I was just praying Jeff at this time I said so uh, all this time this is what was waiting for me well uh, it was morning again these men were were hunting and then they saw me from a distance but I could not call them because the tie is still there. I can only, I can only see. They approached, but they were ready with the arrow and the bow, 
ready to unleash because they don't know whether will react or whatever. But somehow they didn't release it or they didn't have it already swinging on air to prick me out. Then one of them came with the with the panga and cut the cloth into two, one touch, tap, and ran away. So I was figuring out how to get out of this forest. I, w I remember I walked up, to, I walked up around, around Satisa, then I saw the first om. At this time, it was an old man with a uh, with with a lady. They they were plowing. Uh, they saw me and ran away because the condition and the state you will not wait. Mm. Yeah. After running away, I approached the next uh, the next home. This this old old lady uh, was very kind enough. She welcomed me and gave me a bowl of soup. I took. Then uh, I asked them, "Can you would you lead me to the highway?" They led me to the highway. I had no phone. I had no communication, and I stopped the next matatu and sat in. I don't have money. I don't have anything. And when I entered the matatu, everyone even left the seat and went at the back seat because now uh, is this guy mad or what mm -hmm. this, this this driver did not even ask me for a pop he drove me up to elderly town i walked up to those those places of Roma, and i met james and i told james the story so uh james motivated me he was a guy who could motivate you to hell uh, it didn't stop there so in elderly one day i continued i did not give up i continued with my selling i met bonio tail with plates and this guy told me no man sorry i can't buy but give me your number he took my number one week i got a call from uganda this guy introduced himself as jim kuranga the sales marketing manager for Lake West Kenya I said Walter we are uh, opening a branch in Kenya and we're looking for somebody who can help us market our fish I've been told you're the best marketer in, <laughs> in Kenya <laughs> that was the description that Bonio Teo gave James and then uh, I didn't mind because after all we were meeting such people who gives you offers but in the end the, 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 uh, the offers can't mature out with my plates again tomorrow, I'm on the street. Walter, let's fast forward now because we're almost <laughs> at the top of the hour. So how did you get into radio? Yes. How did you get into radio? Oh, so come on. Uh, <laughs> well, uh, uh, I, I got into the radio when I went, when, okay, there's some, somebody gave me, told me categorically that you are a great journalist. Start going to school. Then I went to back to college in Kisi. I was paying as little as 200 shillings and the guy just wrote me a note let him in class he will pay that's what I used to produce uh, for my lectures and then uh, that is after I'm done I went to uh, an, an internship in Radio uh, Tarombeta back in Migori where I was nurtured by the likes of uh, uh, Paul, uh, Paul Odiambo, Nick Mule, uh, Mel Fred then I got a, a call for a radio in Migori, Annual FM. For eight months, I was doing a breakfast show. Like this? Like what you do here. Mm. Unfortunately, unfortunately, I don't know what motivated me to be waking up every morning. People thought maybe there was something that guy is making, is rich. Mm. But in the end, I was surviving from those great people who can say, I love what you do. I hope you understand me too well. There was no salary? Completely. But what's that new FM call? Annual. Annual FM. Okay. Yeah. Noted. <laughs> ah, no! <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, uh, Victor Wetende called me and said, Walter, can we meet? And I met Victor. That is after I had got a job with uh, Lake West Kenya. And a few things happened. I was let go. Boom. Victor Wetende gave me a correspondent job. Uh, for Ebru TV. Then, short lived, I was a security officer for Lake Harvest Kenya. 
guarding uh, Coca-Cola and even at the airport, Lufthansa Airline, with the LSG. A great guy called David uh, Kuruga, hmm. my guy. That is there. Lake West Kenya hired me four years later after they've learned that the firing was unfair and there was justice as operations manager. So I'm, I'm in Uganda and Mamu calls me after I'd seen an advert on Twitter, Ramogi is opening up. I applied. I remember taking my phone and recording a statement. In fact, it was about AMREF International on COVID-19. Mm. That was, uh, it was recorded a short one, sent. A few friends had told me the same and they'd come for that interview. About, and, about 1,300 people had showed up. Mm. So I was the last to be called for an audition. I remember at Kirinyaga, it was Madaraka thing, Wednesday. So um, there, man, uh, Walter, uh, we are going on air, uh, like, you got to demonstrate if you are capable. Two, uh, three, two, one, hmm. Jeff, go. I'm scared. I'm scared, man. <laughs> go. Trrr, first line, Masioburu clapped. Said, okay, you can do it. Let's do it again. I don't know who was running that teleprompter mm. at the, that time. The guy took off with a terrific speed. I read only three things. I remember it was Railo Dinga, ODM, and uh, Gori. <laughs> <laughs> Those are the only things well, I Once you can say Railo Dinga, ODM. So that's again, um, I'm already back. I came from Uganda for that interview. I was scheduled to go to Zimbabwe because I was operating between those lines, Malawi, DRC, uh, Kenya, Uganda, where we, the manager then, I mean the, the director was, then was Robert uh, Osinde, great man with James Kuronga. So uh, these people, I told them I'm, I'm, not suppo I, I'm not able to go back. I will stay. Uh, there, is, uh, there is something, uh, um, I, cooked, uh, I cooked out something. So I'm in church and again, I'm called by Ben. Walter, come for first interview now. Audition is done and you passed. Hey man, sitting, seeing Joa Geo, Jay Bonyo, these people that I see on screen, I was like, hey, I'm done. And then before I even stepped in, I saw Jeff. And Kadiali asked this guy for a selfie. And he, he accepts. I said, oh, cool. Jeff. You remember? Jeff Jeff Kuriyama, Kuriyama, Jeff Jeff, I'm talking about Jeff. Jeff, this Jeff <laughs> Kuriyama. Those are, those are Jeff no, 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 no. Jeff Kuriyama. In fact, I'm, <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I put up that, uh, that, that picture on my status. <laughs> and the guy accepts with a black mask. And we take a selfie. I said, man, I think I'm, I'm going for this thing. The interview is done. Um, I'm called for a, to give a notice that, oh, Walter, you're successful. You can give a notice wherever you are. If you're ready for this, uh, come and we negotiate on payment and all that. Contact Pop on email. I said, I am signing right away. I'm coming for this. And you left Lake Harvest. I left, I, I, but yeah, I left Lake Harvest. Yeah. I, it, what pained me is that they had to close down in Kenya. You can tell your story yourself. Nobody will tell you a story the best way you would wish it to be done. Mm. Two, there has to be a sacrifice in everything you do. And more importantly, once you meet every Jeff, light, you it. <laughs> every light that shines on you yes. has got two things to do to you. Mm -hmm. You will either close your eye depending on the brightness of the light or you would wish to open your eyes Let's that see. big to encounter the light. It's not done and it, until it's done. So that is it.